So this is uh, Jonathan Greenberg's story. He's now an investigative journalist, author, and uh, new media innovator is how he describes himself. But uh, And he wrote this piece for the Washington Post a couple of weeks ago, on April 20th. And he just lays out the story. Back in 1984, he was the editor at Forbes that was putting together the Forbes 100 Wealthiest Americans list. And in the in 82 was when they rolled out the very first the very first list for the very first time and Donald Trump found out that this list was being rolled out. And Greenberg says and I quote Trump wasn't just poorer than he said he was. Over time I have learned that he should not have been on the four uh, the first three Forbes 400 lists at all. Excuse me, it's not the richest 100, it's the richest 400 Americans. In our first ever list in 1982, we included him at $100 million. But Trump was actually worth roughly $5 million, a paltry sum by the standards of his super moneyed peers. As a spate of government reports and books showed much later. The most revelatory document describing Trump's true net worth in the early 80s was a 1981 report from the Jer New Jersey Casino Control Commission. Now, they didn't get to see this until after, till two, until, until after Trump had been on the 400 richest persons in America list for a couple of years, when he shouldn't have been at all. And this is how, you know, Trump lies to accomplish what he wants. I mean, this, this is his basic method of doing business, and now he's applied it to politics. It's his basic method of doing politics, is to lie. And then when he gets caught on the lie, to come up with some other lie, to, ch to change the subject, to move things along. So the New Jersey Casino Control Commission, you can't lie to them, although the documents are supposed to be confidential. But he listed his assets in 1980 as he had an income of $100,000 a year. He had a million dollar trust fund from his daddy. He had a 1977 Mercedes 450 SL. And he had about 400 grand in cash. So his total net worth was a million dollar trust fund, $400,000 in cash, a Mercedes and an income of 100 grand a year. That's less than $2 million. And yet he claimed that he was worth $200 million. Forbes listed him as being worth $100 million because they thought, come on, we know this guy's exaggerating. He's claiming $200 million. It's probably half that. Little did they know, it was only $5 million. Where did they get this information? Where did Jonathan Greenberg get this information? He says, in May of 1984, an official from the Trump Organization called to tell me how rich Donald Trump was. The official was John Barron, a name we now know of as an alter ego of Trump himself. I was amazed that I didn't see through the ruse. Although Trump altered some cadences and affected a slightly stronger New York accent, it was clearly him. You know, Barron told me that Trump had taken position, possession of the business he ran with his father, Fred, which, by the way, was a lie. So why do people put up with Trump's lies? What's in it for them? Well, obviously, you've got, you know, the fossil fuel billionaires. They put up with his lies because they want to make more money. They want to be able to pollute the planet as much as they want, and Scott Pruitt is helping them. You've got the mining billionaires who put up with Trump because of, because of Ryan Zinke. He's, he's, uh, you know, he's already shrunk several national monuments, turned them over to frackers and gold miners and uranium miners. Uh, you know, so they've got you know, some skin in the game. But what about the average voter? The average voter is not concerned about their multi-billion dollar investment in oil refineries or in uranium mines. The average voter is concerned about what? Their economic future. And increasingly, what the Republicans have been doing is characterizing the rise of non-white power in this country as an explicit threat to the economic survival of white people in this country. They say it a million different ways in code. But that's the message of, oh my God, we've got to have a wall. That's the message of, oh my God, we've got to start deporting all these people of color. That's the message of no more immigrants from brown majority Muslim countries. 
That's the message of no more, you know, dialing back radically immigrants from Africa, period, or from Haiti for that, for that matter. That's the message of virtually everything they're doing.